this is uh, this is called I Love You. I first met John at a, a pub in Queenstown, and it was a very natural meeting. And I'd listened to John's music and recognised the voice. Got introduced to him just kind of vaguely and briefly off, off the cuff and then the next day we were jamming down at my studio in Lumsden and um, talking about the project. Now here we are flying up to Auckland, so yeah, really cool, just brought together. The name of the album is Chasing My Grace. Grace is the name of my guitar. I've followed her around the world and she's gotten me to all kinds of weird and beautiful places and like entirely around the world. Three times now, just off the grace of the guitar. And there's a song called Chasing My Grace, which is about that. Also about learning how to have fun drowning attached to a surfboard. <laughs> yeah, it's setting up for day two in the studio. And we're going to run through a few songs that have been kind of enough to let us rehearse here for a couple of hours before the session starts. So we're getting them. Um, and getting our chops together to go through some of the songs for the first time with uh, Matt who's yeah. bent over um, in the drum kit room and Abby who's on the bass. And I have my wonderful setup here with all the microphones that money can buy. <laughs> The quality of the studio, I've been in a fair few now. I haven't run, I haven't done sessions like this in any of them, but this is one of the best studios in the world. And then the click happens. I'm going to take the, can we take the delay off? Back in the darkest morning. Most mornings, and I, I don't even think about how much money is in my in my pocket. I'm more like, wow, look, look where I am, look where it's taken me, look what I've got to look look forward to, like gig wise, studio wise, friends wise. The unlikely um, occasion that you do see a shark, try and get your fish into you as quick as possible. Now these eyes are. Sleeping around when I know that I should. So I'm sitting way around the corner and strip yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Sleeping fine, but my thumb is up and it's coming. Oh, it's coming here. What do you mind? Waking up after an, uh, the, a gig where it just magic happened musically and you touched at least one person who comes to you and says something honestly with reverence, like Paddy in the studio showing me a picture of his deceased brother saying thank you for your song that we were listening to with a tear in his eye. That's honest affirmation that I was supposed to write that song and I was supposed to take it to that studio because it's touching this guy in the way that he needed. 
I've been having it all this week, like sitting in, in that studio, and at the end of every day, hitting those massive pinnacle highs of like, holy fuck, how did we do that? How did we do that again? And I'm just, I can't escape the fact that the music's fucking great. But at the same time, it's not great like, oh, this is the best music anyone's ever written. It's just in there, in that pocket with all the great music that, that, that's around. I sleep in, I'm savoring the light, savoring the light. Somewhere along the way I learned to focus on, on the what I want and what I want is, is to give as much as I can to music and let go of the how. Let go of how it happens. Like, I can't control every element that passes through my life and the lives of others. So letting go of that how and just embracing the, the what and the what is, be on that stage with Dave Matthews, be on that stage with John Butler and put the reverence, the belief in myself that I'm worthy of it. That's, that's the what and the how. How do I get there? I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> And once I started to learn to almost celebrate the things that don't work, that just freed up my positivity. Well, we had half the mind.